What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Internet Famous. I'm your host, Devilor. Uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. We missed a week, um, and we have a lot to talk about today. But first, let me introduce my co-host, uh, the only living human being who has ever actually haggled over the price of a neon pink chair. It's uh, it's Mike B, a.k.a. a.k.a. Mike B. But it's so good, though, man. <laughs> Look at it. It's so You great. haggled for that. Perfect. You haggled. 20 bucks. You talked a guy, yeah, you talked a guy down 20 bucks from from Staples or Office Depot or wherever the hell you were. Half off, baby. <laughs> Half off. It was it was already marked down clearance and it was it was it it, it looked really bad. It de- it definitely looked pretty used. So I folexed it when I got it home, but still like I was looking at it, manager comes over, we started talking, so I got a deal. Got half off the clearance price, man. This thing is so great, and it's the exact kind of chairs I always use. It's perfect. Can we just have the rest Save of this money, episode just be like Mike ranting about his chair? I just, I'm just gonna say it like this the whole rest of the episode. Just yeah. yeah. Put you guys show there. You go. All right. Uh, joining us today as our special guest uh, is one of my favorite role players on Twitch. Uh, also responsible for the. I do mean that. You jerk. Uh, is also responsible for the vast majority of my nacho intake, which is it's the real reason I like him, I think. Everybody, yeah. please welcome to the stage. It is Gatorade enthusiast, Selvik. Gatorade enthusiast. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you can get a Gatorade for 70 cents, uh, you, you're living the dream, really. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How you yeah, doing, man? Too much nachos. Not too bad, not too bad. How are you guys? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Doing pretty good. Coffee. I'm good to go. Decaf. What is? Wait. What is? It's it's 11 p.m. here. Yeah. Uh, So you just like the taste? I've never tried decaf. I just like like coffee. You like the taste of coffee? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, I could see that being. mm -hmm. It's well. I mean, like it's it's. I actually hated coffee at first, and I did use it. You know, because I uh. Yeah. Because it tastes like dirt. Well, at first, yeah. What the fuck yeah, coffee first, do you uh, drink? <laughs> dude, no coffee tastes... Dude, co- it's like beer. Beer tastes like piss. But, a, but a bitch, you could like, hey... What well, beer, beer do you drink? I, I grew up I grew up a lot around a lot of people who were just like, oh, you know, you got to drink your coffee black and all that stuff. And, uh, mm. and yeah. I wasn't... I didn't even think, like, back when I was, like, younger, like, oh, I should throw milk and sugar into this thing. Like, so every time I take coffee, it was like, uh, it does the job. It keeps me awake. But fuck, is it disgusting tasting. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, I was at... Uh, I went to film school. And, you know, late nights there and editing booths and all that stuff. And people just, uh, I just, I grew to love coffee because I had to have it yeah. like twice a night, three times a night. Yeah. So I just, it's just like, a, I just grew to love it. You know, you could, you could like trick your brain, I feel like, because I used to drink a lot of Rockstar and I feel like now I could just take like a sip of Rockstar. Actually, I know I can. I could take a sip of Rockstar and I'll feel like, all right, let's do this. It's like, there's <laughs> no way the caffeine kicked in that quickly. Like, it's just like a brain just kind of like, oh, let's do this now. Like, we got I actually, this. I always wondered if, I always wondered if like energy drinks were mostly like in your mind kind of thing. Like, because it's probably, they, they never seem to work for me ever. I mean, so I'm like, sure they got some stuff to keep you awake, but right. So I'm in. I'm. I'm actually in the process of getting myself back off of caffeine right now because every once in a while I get to the point where I drink too much caffeine and then I I can't fall asleep at night and I can't wake up in the morning, which is bad because I need to like go to work and things. Mm-hmm. Um, not because you're doing RP stuff until three a.m. Not at all. That's not it's the literally like I I will <laughs> I will stop like last night I I stopped at like one thirty and I was awake for another two hours and I just could yeah. not fall asleep. Um. But but to your point, Selvik, about energy drinks being all in your mind, like I found out that the so I usually drink um uh the Monster Ultra whatever it is energy drinks, um the ones that have like nothing in them, they're not made out of ingredients. I don't know how it actually works. Um, I found what out. What does that mean? They're not made out of ingredients. I don't know. It's literally like you look at the you look at the <laughs> thing on the back, and it's like it's like sodium zero, <laughs> cholesterol zero, <laughs> this thing zero, that thing zero, and you're like, okay, so what? What's actually in this? Is it just water? Made, 
Monster made without liquid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. But what I found out was that uh, it tastes very, very similar for whatever reason to diet squirt. So I started drinking diet squirt instead, which doesn't have caffeine squirt? in it. It's squirt, but diet. <laughs> what is squirt? It's like a. It's like a. Um, uh, so go to Pornhub. And no, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. It's like a, a it's like a sprite, but like a little soda. bit more grapefruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a grapefruit soda. It tastes very similar. Uh, and the diet version, for whatever reason, it tastes like it has that like that that awesome aspartame taste to it that energy drinks come with. Mm. Mm. Uh, and so I drink one of those, and for whatever reason, that just tricks my brain into being like, "You just drank an energy drink. Wake the fuck up." See, I want, yeah, I want some of what you're smoking. <laughs> I gotta try this. Yeah. Huh. Grapefruit soda sounds absolutely disgusting. Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's oh, so man. good. It's so good. <laughs> it's a good oh. summer drink. It's a good summer drink. Well, I live in Orange County, so that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time. It's never not summer. I mean, no, here yeah. yesterday it snowed. I miss snow. I miss the 10 seconds of snow that you get before it turns to shit. Like when it's first it snowing melts. and it's like, ah, it's nice outside. It looks great. Uh, and then like two minutes later, you're like, oh, a car drove by. Now this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever driven in slush? I don't know. Uh, where do you live, oh, Mike? Like what state? Uh, California, the uh, Bay Area. San Francisco. Okay. So, you get, have you guys ever driven in slush? There's no snow out here. Yeah, I have. I grew up in Michigan. I lived there yeah. for 30 years. So. Oh, so probably then. Yeah. Yeah, but slush, more than slush, a few slush, times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> slush, slush is terrible. That's the worst of driving. Yeah, it gets and and in cities too. When you're behind cars, it gets all on your windshield and shit like that. It just it's it's absolutely the worst thing ever. It yeah, is just like slurpy, but made out of slush. like snow and dirt. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's like a it's yeah. like a slushy, yeah, yeah. just made with uh, gross dirt. shit. Like, yeah. It's, it's, the ingredients are like dirt and like road runoff and like bits of people's cars <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it <laughs> oh, liquidated roadkill oh, yeah man. exactly go ahead and mm. one, rinse that off real quick tasty stuff put that in a put that in a big gulp choke that down <laughs> um all right so uh we actually have a bunch of stuff to catch up on in terms of topics because we didn't have a show last week and Selvik wasn't here <laughs> anyway, so there's lots to catch up on for Selvik. <laughs> Let me run you through every topic we've ever catch had. Catch me up on the first ten, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a couple big things happened, um, not this week, but last week. One of which was uh, the Twitch layoffs. There were a whole bunch of layoffs. At, well, okay, there was a number of layoffs at Twitch. Um, and it was a, like, as far as, you know, you compare the size of Twitch to the number of people that were laid off, it's a very small number of people that were actually laid off comparatively, but it was also basically the entire Twitch studios staff. So it was really more that they laid off Twitch studios rather than Twitch had layoffs. Um, which is interesting. Like Twitch studios, I think everyone has kind of, everyone has seen something that Twitch studios has done, but oh, yeah. it's difficult to really put. Like, if you're not super familiar, it's really difficult to actually put down, like, what was the thing that Twitch Studios did? Most people think of, like, that sneaker show that they had, which was weird. Um, and, like, I think they did some sort of, like, documentary on people who play Deer Hunter in pubs or something. Um, well, Twitch Weekly is also missing hosts. Twitch now Weekly, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think most people, oh, at really? least Dina, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I am, this, is, this may sound awful, but I actually don't really know what twitch studios is i mean <laughs> it's everything that's actually, yeah yeah no oh, okay no, all right, well, there we go then. yeah, yeah. Well, and also they're, like they're, they're like the production team that puts uh, puts on those things and also the convention uh floor uh, uh, uh yeah. studio sets that they do so that's that's the okay. biggest thing is like if you've ever gone if you've ever like there's been a pax or a e3 or something and you're like i want to keep up with what's going on let me watch the twitch stream of what's going on at pax oh okay. that was twitch all studios right. that was putting that on yeah. i don't think a lot of people actually knew that because um, it was basically, uh, it was Slasher tweeted out, yeah, by the way, so this is the reason that there's none of this at PAX East is because Twitch Studios got laid off. And everyone went, oh, that's who those people were. Yeah. Well, then didn't, still yeah, are, I guess. But didn't, didn't they just start like a game show thing? For yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the stream on thing. Yeah. So who knows so what's going to happen Is that, that done now? Or? No, it's still going. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say, could you imagine getting picked for that? And they'd be like, ooh. By the way, um, <laughs> you know what? This was a mistake. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's why. Maybe Sorry. that's why they laid them off. 
They were like, you, you picked these people? Really? No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a shitty thing to say. <laughs> I, uh, I, I saw a lot of... Um... I saw a lot of people, uh, a lot of like the the old school streamers were were complaining about all the layoffs and stuff on Twitter and whatnot. Um, I, I guess I I don't really, you know, I didn't know any of the uh, the people who got laid off personally, but it it kind of seems like they laid off a lot of people who were there from the beginning. Yeah. Hmm. Um. And and I saw one tweet. I can't remember who it was from, but basically they they explained it or tried to explain it, basically saying that Twitch grew so fast, that, like. The, the people who they laid off were in positions that they were in when Twitch was much smaller, and now it's kind of like it became too much for their area of, ex like, too much for their knowledge, I guess, or something like that. That definitely is a thing. Like, when you have a small company, I don't know that this is specifically what happened here, but, like, it's the sort of thing that happens where you have a company that's relatively small, and you're like, yeah, sure, you've used Twitter once. Be our director of marketing, because at that level, like, that's, that's like, the qualifications that you need. And then your company is massive and explodes and goes crazy. And your guy who used Twitter once is suddenly like, uh, we're taking out a Super Bowl ad and I have no fucking idea what to do with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you basically end up wearing a lot of hats uh, mm -hmm. in a place that's growing super fast. And then, you know, you end up basically being a, 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 a master of none, right? Jack of all trades, a master yeah. of none. Uh, or or you get yourself positioned in a place where you think it's like, OK, well, this I've done all this stuff to help get things going. Now I'm going to work on this project here and you happen to just be in the wrong project. You know, like it's something that just didn't take off and it just you just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And your tenure doesn't matter, it, it, especially especially when you get uh, when you, you know, we're talking about Amazon here. Right. Especially when you look at like the bigger picture of things like it, it's like your tenure doesn't really matter in the long run. It's kind of like, oh, well, these people were hired on or these people are now coming in and they're doing this or now we're offloading maybe something to Amazon or whatever. Uh, and I want to talk about like studios in, in specifically, but like these types of kind of shared resources happen and your position could end up being made redundant. Super easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you and I, Mike, we both went through the uh, whole Zam Tencent thing ages ago yeah. when, mm -hmm. uh, when Tencent took over. And that one actually, that took a while to actually see any real changes for Zam, but like when you get bought by a bigger company, eventually at some point that bigger company is going to be like, right. So we've been looking at your numbers for the last five years and uh, we noticed something a little bit weird. Turns out you're paying people for this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, however, I got out of that. I went to Blizzard and speaking of Blizzard, other things happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to trying to make a beautiful segue. segue yeah, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Flawless. Yeah. Absolutely flawless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh I've been busy the last couple of weeks. Um we announced the release date for Battle for Azeroth, which is exciting. Um This always happens where we say like we put out pre-orders and we're like, okay, it'll be released at the very late latest by this date. Very latest by this date. Go ahead and, and pre-purchase. It'll I come assume out. It's that date. It'll come out always at, on or before what was it like September twenty first or something, and I'm honestly I'm starting to really like this as a marketing strategy because then when we come out with the actual release date, everyone's like, oh, it's way sooner than we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have done it for the past couple of years actually, huh? It's like yeah. I think one time it was like December twenty something, you know, mm. like last year or something like that, or two years ago. It was like it came out like two months before that. Yeah. So it's like, and even they even do that on actual Amazon when you go to pre order stuff. Sometimes they'll put like some absurd date. I think like Destiny did that. There's like some absurd yeah. date in there. I was like, what the hell? Do come out at such a date? It's like, nah, that's just a late. That's the farthest it could possibly, possibly yeah. be released. It's because and they released it before. It's because of fiscal quarters. So we'll be like internally, like, yeah, we're targeting Q3 or whatever for this. And so then we'll be like, all right, let's take pre, -pre purchase and we'll say it'll be Q3. And Q3 means on or before September, whatever it is. And so then people see that and have a little panic. And then well, imagine if you're late, though. What uh, if you're late? Yeah. What a shit if, show. Can <laughs> if I swear we were to if we were to take pre purchase, if we were to take pre pre, uh, pre purchases for a game and say it'll be on out on or before this, and then miss that date, that would be some <laughs> catastrophic level bullshit <laughs> that happened right there. That would be bad. Oh my god! What would you even have to do? Like, would you have to refund and be like, "Well, probably." Just, yeah, I don't know. It's all for free now. 
<laughs> I, don't, I don't think we'd have to make the expansion for free, but we'd probably have to at least offer people refunds or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I don't know the, the financial side of that. Um, speaking of Whoa. dates, um, BlizzCon has a date now, too. BlizzCon going to be... This is really surprising. Really surprising. Is it, wait, can I guess first? Yeah, go. Is it yeah. possibly yeah. the first weekend in November? <laughs> What? Oh man! Who told oh, my you? God. I don't know, man. <laughs> You're never gonna guess where it is. You sure either. you don't want to change your answer first? Hold on, hold on. You sure you don't want to change your answer? I don't know. And the Heim Convention Center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is um, it's actually a huge pain in the ass for me because TwitchCon is the weekend before. So now I have to be like, all right, I'm I'm going to TwitchCon. 100%, I'm going to TwitchCon. Oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. But I'm going to have to, like, fucking cram all of my work, like, in the weeks before that to be like, all right, I think we're ready. Or I'll be, like, at TwitchCon, like, in the corner on my phone answering emails the entire time. Like, yeah, yeah, hi, Coolidge. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Got to deal with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that's... I imagine the hotels Jeez. are booked, eh? I didn't. I didn't realize it was the weekend after TwitchCon. I like. I knew the dates. I just didn't really piece it together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same. Like. Oh, so. That'd be so. Crazy if I, should, I should try to stay. You should. I mean. Yeah. yeah. Where, where, where do you Where do you live, Selvig? Uh, Canada, Ontario. Canada. Just Just make it like a week in California, man. <laughs> like, just come <laughs> yeah. down. Just do it. Just do a tour down the coast. Go down the U.S. Yeah. One Hundred One or the One or whatever, and uh, just yeah, just. just Stay on the on some beachfront uh, motels and. I, I should. It's It's been a while since I um. I think the last BlizzCon I went to was 2000. It was the one they announced um, the best expansion ever. Uh, the one Legion? No, Battle for Draenor. Azeroth? 2010? 2010. War, Warlords of Draenor. It was oh. 2013. Uh, I was not going to guess that one. <laughs> well, that was, it was a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was your idea, by the way. That expansion was your idea. Yeah, yeah. I gotta, Jesus Christ. Anyway, I... Um, <laughs> You're, no, that was you're the one there. that was... keeps telling people that Warlords of Drano was your idea. Well, because you sent me that picture once of you about to tweet it on the official fucking WoW account. And then I was oh, like, I, just, I, I, I did, thought it was funny. I did threaten that. <laughs> yeah, you did. And, and I thought it was funny. And then, I, you know, I, I can't imagine my notifications had you tweeted that. <laughs> I, I can't imagine my notifications had I tweeted that. Oh, yeah. Up yeah, to and including, and by the way, clear out your, your desk. Fo- yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Why does my email suddenly not work? Like the second you hit send, and just everything yeah. just shuts down. <laughs> we we have like like any company, we occasionally have like tech issues or something where people can't log into their computers, and so whenever someone is new, we just be like, oh, oh, you can't. Oh, I can log in. Hey, can can you log? In? No, you can't. Like, oh. <laughs> You might want to go mm. talk to Darcy in his car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, um, do we have those boxes still? Do we have those boxes somewhere oh, still? <laughs> I hate to say it, Rob. I think Mike's had enough of your shit. <laughs> have you tried have you tried your badge recently? It might not be working either. Um that's a so, terrible yeah. thing to do with somebody. Oh my god. That's why it's so funny. I know it is pretty funny. <laughs> and it's good. And it's good. What uh, what all do you need to do to prepare for BlizzCon? Like I'm just obviously it's a lot, but like I, I hydrate. I'm always hydrate. I'm I don't actually know like... this year. All of the <laughs> well, all of the previous BlizzCons, I've been doing a lot of uh, esports shoutcasting. So my preparation has been doing all of the esports shoutcasting throughout the year and like reading up on teams and stuff like that. This year, I don't think I'm doing that. So I'm not sure yet what I am doing. <laughs> what are you, What are you trying to do at BlizzCon? Me. Not you. Is it me? Yeah. What am I trying to do at BlizzCon? Process of elimination. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I... <laughs> no, he was talking to his cat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just go because, like, back in uh, 2013 or whatever, I, I really only played uh, Warcraft. But now I play, like, you know, I play Overwatch. I play, um, what is that other game? Uh, Hearthstone. Uh-huh. Um, so you, you, there, you're like, apparently there's... really into it. <laughs> there, there's more for me at at the uh, at BlizzCon and all that stuff. I just I just like to look around. It's yeah, you know, Twi- TwitchCon's different because there's uh, like there's always I need to go around and doing stuff, and those are mostly the conventions I go to. Is like TwitchCon. I went to PAX one year, but like um, you know, I'm looking around for like the Twitch booth and trying to run and you know meet all these developers and hang out with the streamers and all that stuff. 
BlizzCon, I just get to hang out with my wife and and look around at whatever the hell we we look at and all that stuff. It was nice. Like I, I, I 2013 was like a great year. It was. Uh, was that the wild year? I, I lost track. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was the one where they announced uh, the beautiful expansion wand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just hydrate, man. <laughs> that's that's yeah. all you need. Just, just hydrate, get some sleep. Because yeah, it's like the, it's it's two days, and seriously, like it, it, you end up at uh, you always end up at the Hilton or the Marriott bar, just like tucked into a corner somewhere, and just getting smashed. Just a bunch of people that you know you only get to see once a year, and it's the best. It's the best fucking thing. Uh, so yeah, just fucking hydrate, get some good sleep beforehand, because you just should not really expect to get much uh, much of either <laughs> hydration or sleep for the two days that uh, that the show is actually going on. Yeah. We there is a, to... just so you know, there is not a ERP area at BlizzCon, so. Aww. We can bring our laptops. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you guys just in the hotel room, fully clothed, opposite sides of the room. <laughs> yeah, two, two separate, two double beds, sitting down, look over. You ready? <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. There's, um. I would imagine the Mary and the Hilton are probably booked up as far as rooms go, right? They're also, uh, They're also extraordinarily fucking expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like like three to four hundred dollars a night or something it's insane like that. Uh I booked travel lodge or something or a pizza I don't know, fucking some hut. I don't know. Some some place. I hope it's not pizza hut. Um, <laughs> it was like it was I'm like sleeping a hut. In, I'm sleeping <laughs> in the attic of the pizza hut. Yeah. Man, it was we like, needed some money. It was like a hundred and nine dollars or whatever. But but here's the thing, For like pizza uh hut. If if you book like an Airbnb, that's a lot of pizza. Yeah. Uh, if you book an Airbnb, um, you have to wait until a certain date because a lot of them don't don't actually open up bookings uh, more than ninety days out. So uh, check back. I think it was like August first or something like that was the day. August third or somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I booked a travel lodge uh, with. Um, I hope that's what it is. Uh, with a uh, uh, with the refundable. Cancel the cancellation policy or whatever, uh, so that I could check on Airbnb on the third of August, and then if there's anything good, then I could snatch it up and then refund uh, the hotel and then go there. But I mean, I totally forgot that it was the week after TwitchCon, and even though I'm actually not staying at a hotel because TwitchCon is like like just a little <laughs> over walking distance from here, yeah, um, <laughs> it's it's still it's that's a lot of just you know kind of traveling around Ubers and all that shit. So probably go yeah. for the cheapest option. Well, well, I remember. Um... Uh, the year that we went, like I, I, I made Rel get up early, and I was like, I want to be one of the first ones in line and all that stuff to be out there to get the doors open. Which, first of all, there's got to be a better way than having a fucking stampede of people <laughs> rushing through those doors. Like I actually felt endangered for a moment when everyone was running, and and I was sprinting too. To be honest, I was part of the problem. <laughs> They're all <laughs> running to the store. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was just like. Um, I mean, we actually got decent seats. We we did get there like somewhat early, but I was surprised at the amount of people that were already there. There was like <clears throat> like a thousand people already in front of the door, chilling and waiting and stuff. And I was like, it's like fucking five in the morning. What yeah, are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. The uh, the thing that I used to do before I was actually up with cat, you're you are getting so much love. I She's am... totally gonna shop up a stream somehow. Ah! <laughs> 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 no human no Fine. she's totally gonna like stop the she's recording gonna, somehow or yeah, something she's gonna step on the laptop <laughs> oh you are recording ah oh, i am recording oh, yeah wow well, okay unusually yeah um <laughs> can't make the font any bigger in the dock it's <laughs> actually true um no what i used to do uh when i was still uh just like a streamer and stuff showing up at blizzcon as a non-blizzard employee is i would sit in my hotel room and watch the opening ceremony from the hotel room and then go down to the convention afterwards that's how you do oh my god that's, that's genius. how you do <laughs> yeah. that way you can actually see everything yeah you have the best seat in the house you can, you can sleep for like two si- more hours yeah and you have signals so you can actually like live yeah. tweet it if you want like yeah it's that's... it's much better option oh my god I didn't even. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. It's my God. You should have seen how upset Ro was when I woke her up to go. <laughs> oh man! What a morning. I can. I can imagine. I can imagine. Then there was the uh, the year that I uh, I was working for Blizzard, um, and Olivia was working for. Uh, I think she was at Wowhead still at the time, 
and I accidentally grabbed her badge <laughs> and went down to the convention center <laughs> rather than my own. That was oh, that's uh, right, unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hey, can you let me in, please? And they're like, uh, no, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in here yet. So that was fun. Anyway, uh, moving on to things that are going on this week. Um, I just want to say the phrase radical heights and see what you, how you guys react. To, okay, you don't. You literally just don't. Okay, good. Um, so radical heights is... You're not going to believe this. Brand new idea. It's a, um, a last man standing style third person shooter where you drop in to a map uh, like an island basically that you drop into um, and you run around and you pick up gear. You don't start with gear. You run out and pick up gear. Wait, are there levels of gear? Like there are different levels two? of gear. Oh, yeah, okay, you can right. get stronger gear. There's some, some mm -hmm. gear is good. Some gear is bad. Mm -hmm. um, you pick that up and you're fighting against other people and there's like a hundred people that get dropped in and only one person can actually win that's a crazy <laughs> new idea that's my money that's my money <laughs> that's my dollar signs yeah that's my dollar signs so it, what's super interesting about this this brand new take on the uh the PUBG genre the battle royale genre is PUBG genre. <laughs> I forgot what it was actually called, so I just I, named I like the that. one that I've played a ton of. Poor, poor H1Z1. Poor everything I came up for. Yeah. This, <laughs> this, this brand new take on the Survivor games. Um, it actually came up. So Lawbreakers was the game that uh, was a Boss Cat games. I think is what the Boss Key. Boss Key games. Your cat. Your cat is on your mind right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Boss Cat is something else. Um, anyway, uh, so Boss Key games. Uh, had lawbreakers that did was, not go well. Was was that the the Overwatch? It was over. It was Overwatch. Yeah. It um, was Overwatch. Okay. Game. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was the it was the game that <clears throat> I think it was, I think it was E three like 2015 or something. Mike, you and I were walking around. And we literally walked up to a booth thinking it was an Overwatch booth, but it was <laughs> lawbreakers. Yeah, that, that's, the one, that's the one where they like had like a they actually had a guy that had, like had like an energy shield come out and he was yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that was the guy that was out there. Like on, on it was like a big statue of him, and it looked it yeah, looked, yeah. And there was like a big giant poster of someone who looked exactly like McCree. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was time to be alive. Yeah. Um, so that game did not do well. Uh, they've actually just completely given up on it at this point. They were shutting it down. Uh, like two weeks ago, I think something like something that. Like that yeah. well, shutting down the servers and everything. Yeah, it's it's dead. Dead. It's dead game. Dead game. Ooh, I think I did did a sponsored stream for that. Well, the year one of the well, it didn't work. Half of people Good job. It. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done better. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, this is your fault. Um, but yeah, Lawbreakers is dead now. Um, and so uh, Boss Key Games was like. Okay, we need to make a game that we know we'll make money off of. I've got it. And they came okay. up with a Battle Royale game. And they released it in early access, which to me looks like a very much a, uh, okay, yeah, we really need to make some money right now, you guys. Like, we seriously need some money on this right this second. <clears throat> it's out as early access right now, and it looks super early access. Have, have you, like, either you guys played it at all? I haven't played it. I was going to, I, and then I watched you play it for like an hour, and then I decided I wasn't going to. <laughs> I watched uh, I watched Sequisha play one round of it this morning. Mm. I didn't know what it was until then, like the, early this morning. I watched Sequisha play one round. Um, they they make it like a game show style thing, which I guess is yeah. kind of like a. It's kind of like Smash TV, or yeah, yeah, yeah. A, di a, di a different take, but it. Was, so, wasn't for me <laughs> so I, I i i played a bit now uh i've not played any fortnite um and but i played tons of PUBG, uh and of course you know hizzy and daisy survivor all that shit uh and so what i i actually really enjoy it like 
it is it is very much like it is very early right and there's some stuff that's like super jank right you go into one house and it's fully furnished you go to the next house it looks like the fucking hollow deck like it's <laughs> it is it's just it's definitely like hit and miss there's like invisible walls that definitely shouldn't be around certain like there's like these vending machines that you actually go to spend some of your currency or maybe withdraw some currency from your uh from your accounts because you actually have like a, a persistent currency like throughout the game so you can actually build up money and then buy weapons what only in the game though it's only temporary for that match um but anyways yeah there's like one mm. cul-de-sac that has a bunch of vending machines in the middle and there's like an invisible wall you can't get to it and it's just like okay well that's, that's <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah. uh so there's definitely a lot of quirks like that but i mean for the most part actually i actually really enjoy it like mm. it does it the like, matches are super fast um I feel like the action there's more i mean there, there's because there's no like hot zone like there's no uh uh, there's no like school basically right uh when you drop in you basically everybody drops and you could be- you could fly across the entire fucking map and there's no mm. parachutes you actually do like a little tumble at the end and it plays like a rift <laughs> 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 it's totally corny right but it's part of the charm of the game uh and i mean really i just i like it the gunplay feels good the um uh some of the action is a bit weird but uh, i like what it, what the way that it grids off it basically uses the grids on the map and it starts kind of like randomly uh, uh, checking each one and kind of like, uh, and then giving you a time limit to get out of that zone before it basically starts, you start doing that. Like a blue wall almost will like spawn in that grid. Oh, um, and, so it's not like a big circle that contracts. It's like right. a, you can't be over here anymore. Yeah. And the thing mm-hmm. is, when the match starts, it could have a bunch of that are already kind of like actually read it out or whatever, blue, whatever color it is, right? Um, and then, so you can't enter those zones. And then what will happen is after an initial couple of minutes those zones will open up and new zones will close off and so what can happen it's really kind of interesting uh you could actually have like two split groups of people fighting across the entire map and then once it gets down to a certain number or a certain amount of time or whatever then the map will actually start closing off and then and then it'll open up and it'll start forcing you towards the middle say for like final showdown basically mm-hmm. and it kind of gets everybody and then you have a small circle that'll appear uh, okay and it'll start to kind of close in Jesus so it does Christ. have the circle thing, but initially it's just a grid that kind of randomly spots and kind of uh, and starts to cause damage if you're in those areas. So it's new, at least you know all the rest of them just have circles that close in. Yeah. Whether it be gas <laughs> fields or electric fields or yeah, yeah, exactly, spike, or gas spike or fields, something. whatever the fuck they want. Like, is this you know? is this the so, uh, the the battle royale game for people who are tired of battle royale games? Is that? Uh, <laughs> it's 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 the people that are tired of PUBG but don't feel like fucking building shit in Fortnite, you know? Like it's it's got that cartoony, just kind of doesn't take itself seriously type of vibe that uh, that Fortnite has. Um, it doesn't have a Drake yet. It needs a Drake, really. Like once they get like somebody like that to kind of latch onto it, then I think they'll probably get, pick up some steam. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, overall, I actually really enjoy the game. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. But I mean, I understand why some people want to dismiss it as just another battle royale because just like we did with with MMOs, and then we did again with MOBAs. It's like everybody wants to cash grab and and, and get in and try to make some money off of this genre. Uh, but I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with giving it a chance. It's fucking free. <laughs> You know, yeah. like just download it and play a couple of matches, see if you like it. Yeah, the um, so the microtransactions I think are an interesting aspect of it because it's the um, it's the only one so far that really allows you to have any persistent in-game sort of uh currency that you keep around. Um, and so you can actually like you can go up and buy a gun. Like if you have enough cash and you can withdraw it, you can just go up and buy a gun off of a store. Is that correct? So. There's there's the RMC and then there's um, <clears throat> the in-game currency, right? Uh, the RMC is only you only buy uh, uh, cosmetic items uh, using oh, okay. using the gems, right? Um, the cash, the dollars that you see, you you what happens is let's say you get into a match and you find <clears throat> you find a rifle and then you find another rifle, then you're like, you know, what? I'm, I, fuck this rifle, but I'm gonna pick it up because if I find a trade in or a recycle joint or whatever, I could trade in and get some money for it. Right. So it's basically like pawning things, you know, and so you can actually spend a match just kind of running around and grabbing things out of houses and selling them and just and racking up some money and then find an ATM machine and deposit that money. It'll go into your offshore account and your offshore account is basically your persistent bank account. Mm-hmm. And then you could save that money for the next time you play because you might you might land. It's like, oh, here's this like tier three rifle with like, a you know, with all these, these attachments, everything already on it. Um, and it's it costs like fourteen hundred dollars. Well, you're not gonna have fourteen hundred dollars like the second you land, but you could run to an ATM, withdraw the money from your persistent accounts and then go back and pick it up if you want to. So <clears throat> we were talking to uh, Shizzle about it the other day. 
Mm-hmm. And w- from that system, he, he raised a point that I am actually a little bit concerned about, which is... It's it's kind of the same issue that um, Escape from Tarkov ran into, where after like a little while, like a few weeks, there were the people that had been spending a whole bunch of time playing the game and thus had a shit ton of stuff built up and could just wreck you all the time. And if you were brand new, you would just join in and immediately get shit on by somebody who could just run off. Who They just came into the thing with an AK-47. Um, is that... You know- you don't. They, you don't. They probably make the money back too by <clears throat> winning the round. I would assume. Yeah. Telling a bunch of people winning the round. So you have to. So first off, placement of the items to where they spawn uh, is 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 random. Let's say like the vending machines. Right. The vending machines are pretty much fixed. You go to any convenience store, there's gonna be a vending machine in there. But it's only gonna have one item in it. And now I, that one item could be anything. It could be a tier one shitty pistol or something, or it could be a tier three, you know, Uzi or something. Um, there are also apparently rocket launches in the game, but I've actually never seen one. So I don't. So apparently they're like super rare drops. I have no idea. Um, but uh, while yes, you can say somebody could go and grind up a hundred thousand dollars and basically have you know uh, uh, twenty matches where they have the upper hand if they happen to come across a weapon that will give them the upper hand. But none of these like the weapons that they pick up from they can't choose which weapon they get from the vending machine. It's just whatever happens to be in it at the time, and you land with nothing, just like any other BR. So it's you could say, yeah, if somebody gets really lucky and they get a rocket launcher every time they, they go out to the first convenience store, they're going to win every single one of those matches. Sure. Like that's entirely a possibility, uh, of course. Uh, but the odds of that happening are pretty fucking slim. And also they're spending their money that they, gr- that they went through and they, they grind it out. Uh, <clears throat> they're spending it. So they have to basically re-earn it again. So I'm, I'm assuming if this ever gets to the point where there's going to be like competitive play involved, they would have to they'd probably make it so everybody starts with zero when everything would be done in game to buy that kind of shit like how much like how much do you make per game like uh let's say if you're an average player you get like two three kills maybe and then die um how much do you make per game as opposed to how much like a a decent uh, tier three weapon would cost so that's that's actually kind of one of the interesting things too is like like i said you could go to atm and you could deposit money into your offshore account um but if you hold on to your money and you win you double that money so oh. there's that risk. There's that risk involved where it's like, okay, I could deposit the money and ensure that I have this going forward. Because you can make, I mean, pretty easily in the first, you know, uh, in every single match, let's just say you do like mediocre, right? You could you could mm. definitely bank like probably five hundred dollars if you're just if you again if you're like dying in the top in the fifty to hundred, right? Uh, you could bank like five hundred dollars each time. And and like I said, the rifle, the the uh, tier three weapon prices range wildly. It could be a hundred dollars. It could be fifteen hundred dollars. So you might have to play three matches in order to even pay for a single tier three, or you could get a single tier three off of some money you got out of a cash register in the same convenience store. So it's like there's. I feel like it's too early to tell if there's going to be any kind of severe like Im- imbalances because there already is such a wide gamut, a wide spectrum of like how much things cost, where they, uh, where you can pick up the items. And then uh, of course there's like, oh, oh and, then, and then of course it's like, if I wanted to uh, withdraw $1,500 from, uh, from the ATM, you can only withdraw $100 at a time. So there's the risk of standing there going, ching, click, mm. cha-ching, <laughs> click, <laughs> cha-ching. <laughs> so there's a lot of risk involved with like running around with money, kind of like Grand Theft Auto. You know, it's like you could potentially lose a lot of money if you're running around with a ton in your hand. Can people rob you in this game? Uh, if they come up, cover behind them when they're at the ATM, put your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. They they do get some money when you die, but you keep. Uh, I think you lose like thirty percent or something like that off the top. If you if you die, you get thirty percent. You give it get thirty percent of whatever you have in your pocket. Okay, that's a lot of like. That's a lot of things up to chance in a in a game like that. I find like mm. a lot of people don't like the red circle in PUBG. Just because nah. it's it's so random and stuff like that, but that, that's like yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot yeah. of random shit. There's a lot of random stuff, and I feel like there's probably some tuning that they might do to kind of try to level that off a little bit. Like maybe make tier three weapons cost thousand dollars plus, you know, instead of a yeah. hundred dollars at times. Yeah, no, it's interesting, and it, it it almost seems like it almost seems like they're developing this game to be played by like so. I don't think every game needs to be competition ready. I don't think that like esports ready right out the gate. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I think it's fine if these guys were to say like, no, we're gonna make this game fun to play, um, and it'd probably be fine, fun to stream as a result of being fun to play. But it not necessarily, we don't need to necessarily make a a fair and even balanced competition out of it. 
Um, and there are a lot of people who actually end up for reasons that are not immediately obvious, but you do actually end up enjoying the games that have more randomness to it because you can always feel like there's that chance that you get that lucky moment where you're like, yeah, no, this is great. Oh you'll, my God. You'll I, be yeah. the winner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like eventually it means that you will have games that you, that you do really well in. And I think, I think a lot of people tend to go, yeah, I played really, really well that game. When in reality, it's because the 15 people around them all got completely and totally fucked. And they're just yeah. like, <laughs> uh, damn, I was good. <laughs> well, like, well, I, the, won a, uh, I won a PUBG match by killing one person. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, oh, like yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Yeah, but in reality, I literally just like, got, I got a couple weapons, some armor. I hid at the side. Circle closed in. I went there. I hid in another bush. <laughs> went in more. Hid in a shed. Went in more. Eventually, I heard gunshots. Saw the number at the top right. Flicked from three to two and went, all right, now's my chance. Got out. 50 <laughs> 50. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then my, I was like, damn, what a professional player I am. I won. Yeah. I'm so good at this. I'm so good at this. <laughs> Speaking of PUBG, they've actually had a couple of updates here um, relatively recently. Um, so they they came out with their new map, their four by four map. So the the basic the starter map is eight by eight. So this is it sounds like half, but it's actually a quarter of the size because it's mm -hmm. it's four square miles basically. Um, well, no, that would be uh, kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Um, the right system to use. Jesus. <laughs> um. So it's it's a lot smaller. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to jump in and play it. I, I Mike, I know that you jumped in and played it a little bit. Um, I was yeah. watching. Uh, I was watching you play it a bit, it, but you'd like hurt yourself at the time or something. So it was mostly an exercise in like, can Mike use a computer? <laughs> like, can I? Yeah, yeah. It was like <laughs> right when I first started wearing this, and so like I've actually got to kind of shave down pretty well, where it's pretty smooth. Mm. But I was like, re I actually was putting like electrical tape on it, trying to make it really smooth, just because I couldn't. Like, it was like <laughs> gripping the mouse pad and everything. I couldn't fucking figure it out. Uh, you were no, like, it, I can't jump over the edge. I can't yeah. jump over the edge. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it, you know. What's weird is like they have the war mode thing, which is like basically deathmatch, mm. uh, and, and then they have this this map. And I feel like they're really close to each other. Like if if I want to go for like fast action, then why not just play war mode? You know, like this the the map is great. You know, you 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 land and like things happen super fast, or you get your your sea do and you just like zip around, just be an asshole. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, like for the most part, it's like the action is just it, it's much faster because it's a hundred people in a quarter of the size of the map. Um, and not as it just not only is it like the quarter size of the map, but also like it's surrounded by water. So there's a huge chunk of like the, you know, the map, several kilometers square that you actually don't even use at all. They don't even count towards this. Um, but it's you know it's it's basically you can almost land anywhere uh, and get into a fight with somebody super fast. Uh, so it's like with again like going back to the war mode thing. It's like well with war mode, which is basically like deathmatch. Like if I want fast action, I would just play that instead. I feel like these are almost like too similar. But in so in, in, the... in war mode, do you spawn with weapons? Because I was you watching do. Shizzle. Yeah, uh, play, you get an SMG. He, he was like. Yeah, he was like landing with weapons and stuff like that. Yeah, which I'm assuming you don't in in just like when you're just playing that map normally. Which honestly, I'd be shitting my pants every single time I played <laughs> that map. I I land somewhere, and the first thing I'd feel is like I'm gonna die if I don't get a gun within the first five seconds here. Like I need <laughs> a gun or I'm dead. Yeah, it's good fun. Like if you like landing at school, like on the regular map, if you like, don't. like okay, well then you don't want to play this at all. Yeah, <laughs> no, this it's this, like landing I, school every time. I I, ju I jump out of the plane, pull my shoot early, and go as far away from the, <laughs> the plane as I can. Land, get as much weapons as I can. Like, they give and, you and a car, just cruise, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see if I can land on the starter island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this uh, I'm I'm super excited for the new map because I'm I am the guy who drops at school 100 percent of the time or at. Uh, uh hacienda in miramar 100 percent of the time because i'm like no i want to land and get in a fight right away because my my whole philosophy is i don't like nut the job. games <laughs> i'm in, i am a nut <laughs> job i don't like the games where i scramble around for loot for like 30 minutes and then get shot out of nowhere and die like that that feels like a waste of 30 minutes to me so i would rather land get in a fight lose in the first 20 seconds or win and then continue on with the rest of the match and have actually had some action personally. So I'm excited that. for that. Um, the war mode is the other thing though, that you were, you were talking about. Um, so the, the difference is basically that you have, uh, you, you start with a submachine gun. You basically, you land with a submachine gun 
Um, and then rather than you're out when you die, um, when you get a kill, your team gets a point. And once you get up to uh, 80 points, 80 you, points you, yeah. yeah, you can also <clears throat> get it from knockdowns and revives uh, points from knockdowns and revives. Um, but rather than, uh, oh shit, I got killed and now the game is over for me. Like you just, you come back in and you keep going and you, you try to, you try to win. Um, and that's, that's super interesting to me from a, like getting newer players into battle Royale perspective. Cause one of the things that oftentimes you see people say about battle Royale when they're first starting to play it is it's too stressful. I'm worried that I'm going to die. And so I just spend the entire game hiding <laughs> because I'm worried that I'm going, there was a guy five kilometers that direction. Yeah. I better hide. You get the jitters. Like what I, I stopped playing uh, PUBG for the longest time until uh, the four by four came out. And then when I got in, I had those like those the first time like jitters where it's like, I'm like running around. And I'll hear like a gunshot in the distance and, my, and you can see visually my whole hand, like, like, Flicks like that, I'm like oh shit! And it's like my whole screen like moves. I'm like, oh, that was fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I totally like flinched, you know? Like, yeah, you ha like it's a good way to iron that kind of stuff. I actually wish that the war mode came out first, so I can jump in there and actually like kind of get back into the group because every game has this different feel in terms of gunplay, you know. And and you, even your mouse sensitivity, you try to like get it just right in every single game, and it never is quite perfect. So when you're like away from one game for so long, it's like it's it'd be nice to have something that's kind of like landing in school constantly, but it's like on repeat, like just constantly going in there and just getting into fights. And you can use the gunplay. Grounds, and, yeah. 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 yeah the, the, the. I, I did want something like that. My idea for PUBG, I thought it'd be really cool, is to basically have like a uh, a 50 versus 50 kind of thing, 100 versus 100, if, mm. even if they can have it. But like one team starts at one side of the map, other team starts oh, at the right. other. There's a couple weapons around. And then like <clears> you basically just go towards the middle and it's actually just like a huge like battlefield war thing. It, I think that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this is probably as close as they're gonna get. I would imagine. Well, they're but, they're uh, opening up modding at some point for PUBG. I and, thought they said they were they weren't anymore. Oh, uh, have they decided not to? I keep hearing when mods come from Shizzle. So. Uh well, he probably know more than I would. So. I also I, I don't know. I I was told that yeah. because like I was looking for. I thought you know, imagine you know like how Arma is right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people people modded that so much and like the the RP mods that came out of that. And I was thinking, like, imagine if you could RP on PUBG. And, yeah, and so you're not I was, the first person to say that on this show, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like um, talking Mitten about like, anything. yeah, exactly, uh, and talking about the idea of uh, like, <laughs> what was it? Shizzle said, "All I want to do is all I want out of PUBG mods is like someone to add zombies and remove the circle." And make it persistent. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so. You just want someone to make Daisy in PUBG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what Daisy that is. Mod. Daisy though, Daisy had a fantastic way of uh, making you feel those jitters that you were talking about. Yeah, like I, 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 it did, it did kind of go away like the longer that you played it for me anyway. Yeah. But like I remember my first gunfight in um whatever the fuck the town was it was one of the big towns on the, the east coast but like uh, cherno or electro or something cherno i think it was yeah mm. and, and and i remember um like having my hands and and like on the thing and just like they just went cold mm. yeah. and, like <laughs> as soon as i started hearing gunshots i was trapped in like a uh like one of the hotel things apartment buildings and i was just like cold and shaking and like it was just it was the craziest feeling like i was yeah. actually shaking a bit and like i've spent three days getting this gear yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah. I don't want to die here yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, and it's so it's Daisy. so bad too because yeah. when when you get shot in day z it's it's literally just like black screen you're dead yeah yeah there wasn't even like there. a yeah. you didn't even get like the oh your body falls over or something it was literally just like yeah. boop, you hear a boop, shot dead done. yeah yeah no, I, I similarly, I remember the first time that I encountered another player in Daisy, and I didn't even, I never even saw them. I was just literally, I was in the church in Electro, just running around like, bah, 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 I'm gonna loot some stuff, and I heard someone roll up on an ATV. I was just like, then <gasps> 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 like sitting there with a gun pointed at the door to the church the entire time. My fucking um, uh, <laughs> what was it called? The dinner bell thing. Uh, the one that was super loud and would alert every single zombie on the entire map. Oh my god. Uh I don't remember what it was called in in Daisy. It's similar to the Car 98 in PUBG. Um but the I was Mosin? just sitting there. What's that? Was it the Mosin? No. 
I uh, I don't remember what it was called, but um, they're just sitting there with that thing pointed at the door. I'm like, someone's going to walk in that door and I'm going to have to shoot them and I'm only going to get one shot. So I'm just like sitting there panicking the entire time. And yeah. eventually they just left or something. I don't, I, I have no concept of what happened. Because with you that were person. there the, the rest of your life. <laughs> your character exactly. is long yeah. out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then eventually, like, it got to the point where everyone started running the, the non hive servers. This is back in the Daisy Mod days. And it would turn into the, like, all right, let's fix up a helicopter and just drive around fucking with people the entire time. And that was, <laughs> that was really fun. That was awesome. Um, Daisy is, it's supposed to be the year of Daisy, according to again, again. somebody. Yeah. The Enfield, yeah, that was the one that I was thinking of, the Lee Enfield. Oh, okay. Um, the uh, well, yeah, apparently the new the new patch looks like apparently really really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm. I, they kind of redid the whole game, didn't they? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It's something about putting in, like a new another new engine or something, which sounded strange because that they were already on a different engine. Well, they, were, they were on the, they they were on the like new Arma Arma engine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, they're like moving to uh, CryEngine or Unreal or something like that. I thought I heard. I might be mm. completely make completely making that up. I heard it's cool. No one facts it. Check just checks the show in real time, so you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one, <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one will Unity? correct me. I think it's like Unity, Daisy, Unity Edition. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, uh, it's like the Hearthstone <laughs> engine or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm I'm getting back around to the point where I'm like, mm, I could go for a. I could go for a daisy again. I could go for some daisy again. I was like looking at miscreated the other day, like looking at the, the icon and being like, ah, do I, don't I, do I, I did not <laughs> End result. I did not. Yeah. You got GTA. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> End up yeah. launching GTA instead. Yeah. Jump in there, arrest some people. Burn myself out on that game. <laughs> I'm excited for the... We're not, not going to talk about it here, obviously, but I'm excited for this new idea we've been talking about for GTA. I I think we're going to tell people on Sunday. Cool. I was, actually in the, I was actually in the middle of writing out a document for it, honestly. Nice. Um, so we are just about out of time. We got a little bit more time here. Uh, we have enough time to talk about how Logan Paul is on Twitch now. Um, Can we talk about that? <laughs> I mean, I think what's interesting about the Logan Paul being on Twitch thing is that <laughs> so Logan Paul came to Twitch and all of the articles about that so far have been about his like moderator team being like, wow, it's really hard to moderate Twitch chat. People say <laughs> bad things. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> mm. are you... <laughs> Do you know who this person you're moderating for is? What platform you're on, etc. I don't know. It's it's pretty. Yeah, they're, they're a moderator team of three, by the way. Yeah, that's yeah. that seems like plenty he has, of people. He has three mods for the onslaught that he would get on Twitch chat. Yeah, I can imagine it would be a little difficult. <laughs> Why doesn't he just go in in sub only mode? He 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 couldn't yet. He was an affiliate. Yeah, like Twitch didn't like give him a a free partner oh or really anything. they did that too a lot they did that they did that for moon yeah not for moon. not for logan paul <laughs> i don't think i don't think twitch is gonna is gonna take that risk yeah they're not that gonna they're not yeah. gonna all the branch risk. logan paul <laughs> that, that headline i mean twitch twitch gives you know and then insert some random yeah, thing yeah, in the past couple months has created headlines yeah so i uh, so yeah that's funny also moon is apparently cooler than logan paul so i, mean, <laughs> I feel like most people are cooler than logan paul but that's his first nice. his his first bot uh I'm looking at his bots, it's curious like how many how many times he streamed. He streamed twice so far, but his first title is actually pretty pretty funny. He's like not live with Drake, but still hooking it. He's like it's, and his setup is actually pretty pretty great. I mean, like considering Yeah, well he didn't do it himself. Ah, uh, well, yeah, you. of course. He's he's got like a he's got like a team and everything, but still. Yeah. So <sighs> the last thing I want to talk about here, just real quick, because it's hilarious to me. Someone has made uh, a type of ransomware. So ransomware is it will grab a hold of files on your system in some capacity. Um, usually, usually the way ransomware works is it will check like all of your take all of your files. It will encrypt them through some manner of encryption. 
So you you now cannot access them. And it'll pop up with a window that says, hey, send $200,000 to this address or... 200 th- Keep the files. <laughs> 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 or however much yeah. they think is going to work. Like, send, yeah. send $200 to this address or you will never access these files ever again. Um, if you watched uh, Mr. Robot, Ransomware was a, a big... Uh, a big part of uh what was that season was that season two or season one of mr it's robot a big part of like the entire story arc pretty much yeah, yeah yeah um so they they had done it to a bank in that specific or to a major corporation in that specifically um but this is kind of like it, it is something that actually happens in, in the real world so someone has made some ransomware <laughs> that so first of all all it does is encrypt the files that are on your desktop like your actual Windows desktop. So if you don't store your files on your Windows desktop, like if you store it anywhere else, then they're fine. <laughs> um, secondly. Only on the desktop? Only on the desktop. Yeah. What do I have here? Secondly. Um, <laughs> Checking all these shortcuts, shortcuts, shortcuts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't. Would that, would that mean that they could only get the shortcuts? Like, all right, oh no, you got my fucking. You got well, my it, WoW shortcut, I guess. Well, it's I mean, everything like, in your desktop, desktop like, so, folder, so it would include yeah. like your documents and stuff. If you store, if you store them in the Windows default document folder, like a loser, I do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but here's the, here's the hilarious thing about this is it, they don't ask for money, they don't ask for like some kind of cryptocurrency or anything of any actual value. Instead, they ask uh, for you to play PUBG for an hour. <laughs> That's it. What? It's literally like it comes up and this is this is a screenshot of what it looks like. Uh and it comes up <laughs> and it just says your files, images, music, documents are encrypted uh by PUBG ransomware, but don't worry, it's not hard to unlock it. I don't want money, just play PUBG for an hour. <laughs> Why? <laughs> And here's the thing. So this this it gets better. It gets better. There's two additional things that get better. One, uh, it doesn't actually take an hour, according to. So I, I saw this on um, I think it was on Engadget. I was looking at. Oh no, it was Kotaku that I was looking at it. Um, and they they were testing it, and uh, it doesn't actually take an hour. It takes like three minutes of it being in oh. PUBG, <laughs> and then it's like, eh, good enough. You launched it. That's fine. There you go. What the fuck? And secondly. If you see this box down here, if you just type that in there, <laughs> then that also works. What do you type? What is it? It's uh, so it gives you a hash code basically. So uh-huh. like our restore code is S two A C X X five six etc. If you just, okay, I don't even. Have, I I obviously I have not installed this ransomware on my PC. You should do it right like, now. On the copy show, and paste it down there yeah. for the ratings. Let's do it. <laughs> and then have a have a stream of myself getting my files back <laughs> playing PUBG for three minutes. Um, so this is just funny, basically. That's awesome. anything else. I don't so, know why so this someone, exists. So someone who's good with computers is just like, you know what? You know what game I love? I love PUBG. <laughs> and I want to share it with the world. I'm, you know tired. I mean? <laughs> I'm tired of Fortnite. Fuck Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite, Fortnite gets a drink and someone's like, I gotta figure out a way to get more people to play PUBG. And it's like, here we go. My favorite game is dying. <laughs> All right. So that's going to basically wrap us up for this week. Um, but we do have one last article of business to take care of, which is that we need a name for this episode. Um, I forgot to mention at the start of the show, but we do every episode. We, uh, we name the episode based on suggestions from Twitch chat. <laughs> and we're not we're not Logan Paul, so this should not go that bad. Um, <laughs> but we are looking for suggestions of what we should name name this episode uh, of Internet Famous. Uh, so just as soon as the chat catches up here, remember we talked about just in case you forgot uh, Logan Paul. We've talked about uh, the new PUBG stuff. We talked about Radical Heights, and we talked about BlizzCon uh, and the layoffs. But we won't we won't. Not layoffs now. <laughs> Slurp and squirts with Selvik. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> what about, what about slushy squirts? Oh, you have to add with Selvik in it. It's already in the title. It's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Name it Cell F. Hmm. Yeah. What was Selvik's idea? 
<laughs> what is it? Why was Celtics idea? <laughs> oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Watch no Eric ERP. Davis to unlock your files. Nice. No ERP in the hotel room. That's good. I found a dead body in Pachinki. <laughs> That's just creepy. <laughs> I wonder if Pink chair haggling. I slightly wonder if that's actually even a uh, a suggestion or if Soul Youth is just telling us, Hey, I found a dead body in the cheeky. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> just, just goes over from a second monitor, just like, oh shit, hey guys, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Guess what, everybody? All right. Uh what was the Slurping squirt with Selvig? Is that what the, the one was earlier? For the love uh, of God. Slurp, slurping squirts with Selvig. All right. We don't we don't have to name it that. Oh, we don't? We don't have to. Selvig seems sad about that one. So. No, no. Oh. I, don't, I think it's funny. Okay. Oh, perfect. Go for, yeah. it. Go for it. All right. <laughs> Mike, it goes on your YouTube channel. Are you okay no, with it? It's, like, it's squirt, man. It's a soda. What? What do you want? Okay. Slurping <laughs> yeah, that's squirt. What it is. That's all I'll tell the YouTube partnership with Selvig. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's it there we go slurping squirts with selvik that's gonna be that's gonna be the name of this episode i'm glad that we do this so that i can remember why i leave a lead a miserable i'm life. gonna go through and check all the other names <laughs> <laughs> some of them are pretty bad some of them are I, think pretty the, bad. I think the one with video game attorney is the best though Oh, that was pretty good, yeah. That was pretty good. It's just I anal with Ryan Morrison. <laughs> I anal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Selvik, if you're still alive, thanks for coming on the show, dude. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And, absolutely. Uh, I've actually been looking forward to go, so I was, I was pretty stoked when you asked me. Yeah, I well, was nervous because when you asked me, my sleep schedule is absolutely fucked right now. And I was like, and I was like, what if, what if, like, I fall asleep like three hours before I'm supposed to be on the thing, and I don't wake up in time? And, and like, I was so nervous. So then you just didn't Thank sleep. <laughs> yeah, I did. I haven't slept all day, or, or yeah, I barely slept last night. Nice. Well, well we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much sacrifice. for coming on. You can find oh, Selvik Jesus. on Twitter at Selvik TV and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Selvik. Mike B, aka aka Mike B. Thanks for being here again, buddy. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Won't be here next week though, FYI. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're you're on vacation next week. Yeah. Though. Yeah, though. Yeah, though. No. Yeah, By though. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and I have been your host, Josh Allen, aka Double Or. Again, still here. I'm not on vacation next week, but. Though. So you can do it alone? I probably won't. <laughs> no, I'll probably. I'll probably. We'll probably skip next week. We'll probably skip next week. But it's fine. Gonna, you, you could just. What if you? I was gonna say. What if you don't get a host? So it's like literally just you. <laughs> just me talking for <laughs> an hour, just ranting. Just yeah. have like two squares and just do like do the voices for each one. You just keep the perfect. layout the same and everything. Have like legs and <laughs> and a fucking demon voice and shit. <laughs> what? Perfect. I'll just have to be like, hey guys, thanks so much, blah blah blah. Thanks for being here, everybody. And then I'll just be like. Uh, and slide myself over and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, so what Thank do you think? You for me oh, I think I think all sorts of crazy <laughs> things about this. This is wow! I cannot understand what. What do you think? <laughs> oh, <I'm all> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now that is a podcast I would watch. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much once again for being here. Uh, remember, everybody who's been watching this live, you can find all the previous episodes on Mike B's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash aka Mike B. Check him out over there. Um, we will not be here next week, more than like, unless I do the sliding myself around all the time thing, but that seems unlikely. We will not be here next week, uh, <laughs> but we'll see you in just a couple weeks. Thanks again, everybody. Peace. Peace.
sorry. 